Hello everyone, this is Denise Love and today I want to talk about finishing and framing because every single video I post somebody wants to know about finishing and framing and what it is that I do to finish pieces, if I finish them, um, how I store them, how I might frame them. Um, lots of questions come up every time I post a video. So I just wanted to kind of give you a general here's what I do kind of scenario and everybody I'm sure has their own art practices and you may do it different or you may like one of these methods and every artist I'm sure does it different so this is just kind of my own two cents on what I do for finishing so depending what's on the paper I may or may not finish it at all um, that may be the finish and then I will store these in clear plastic art sleeves which you can get on Amazon, you can get from Uline. They're just um, archival plastic sleeves that you can slip art into and then it will protect them from rubbing into other pieces of art and getting damaged and a lot of times if I want to use uh, the sleeve for more than one piece of art I will put similar pieces back to back and then I feel like that sleeve is giving me some double duty if it is something that you're wanting to frame up for instance for a customer uh, to give to a gallery maybe um, you could put a mat in this frame in this uh, sleeve along with the piece of art to stiffen it up and to kind of make it look framed without actually framing the piece in an expensive frame and that's a good way to take these to galleries and to set up at art shows um, so just a pre-cut mat would work for that or if you've got oddball sizes you might have um, you might start getting big pieces of mat and learning how to cut mat yourself so that you could put a mat in this sleeve you could also put like a blank large blank piece of mat in the sleeve itself just to stiffen the whole sleeve and have the art sitting in front of it you could be kind of creative there with um, how you might package that if it were a more formal situation where you're selling stuff um, I don't sell art people ask me what I do with these pieces that I create I make art for myself and I make art to do videos and I like to teach and I like to make videos and I've done this for a very long time and even when I had uh, did all the photography classes and took all the photos and photography my goal there was to teach not to sell um, to be quite honest you know selling art that's a labor of love and that's a whole full-time job by itself and so you just have to decide like how many hours do you have in the week do you want to take on that full-time job in addition to everything else you do and I decided a long time ago it's not my goal to sell it's my goal to to teach people to have fun and learn to sit at their table and enjoy creating and just seeing like where can you go in your art practice and I have so many amazing pieces that I create now whereas before I had so many you know pieces that I threw in my scrap bin to cut up <laughs> so I may change that philosophy you know the longer I create art and the more art I get that's stacked up but as a teacher who makes videos I use these for samples and I frame a bunch of stuff and I have gallery walls hanging in my house and sometimes I gift these to other people at holidays and birthdays um, if they're card sized sometimes I'll slip a micro small card sized piece of art and send that to somebody um, they could be card fronts I mean there's so much stuff that you can do and you're gonna have to make a lot of art to get good at making art so just resign yourself to early on you may have a scrap bin I don't throw any art away because even the scrap so I turn into collages and I've got some collage classes on Skillshare if you want to get some ideas on how to turn your scraps into um, art but these pieces that I've created you know this year hardly any of them go to the scrap bin I've really enjoyed a lot of the direction my art has gone and and it's getting better and better so I will store these in sleeves until I get ready to to photograph them or do whatever it is I'm going to do with them um, and this is an 8 inch by 10 inch sleeve I've also got a larger um, 11 by 16 inch sleeve so these come in a lot of sizes you can get them in packs of 10 or packs of 100 and you can just have them available to slip your art in so depending on 
what is on this piece of art is going to depend if I finish it. Do you have to finish your pieces of art? Absolutely not. If there's something on here that's going to continue to shed, like a soft pastel, so if you're using, you know, say your chalky Sennelier pastels on something, then that has the possibility to continue to shed for the life of the piece. And a lot of pastel artists that work on pastel mat and pastel papers do not use pastel spray because the spray instantly darkens the whole piece. I've done that myself, totally ruined my favorite piece I was working on. <laughs> but if I'm doing pieces like this where they're pretty little abstracts, and maybe there's some powder in here that I don't want to have the risk of smudging, then I might consider the Sennelier Soft Pastel Fixative. I will lightly spray the piece outside because this stuff stinks, and then I will let that dry, and then I may spray a second or third coat on it depending on what that did. And I would always do a small sampler piece before I would ever do that on the important piece. <laughs> You'll learn a valuable lesson if you do the important piece and you're like, uh oh, it did something I didn't expect. So definitely do this on a non-important piece first to see how all of the art materials you're using and the paper that you're working on, how it's going to react. If, like on this piece, I used oil pastels, um, I am most likely every time going to use the Sennelier oil pastel fixative simply because oil pastels seem to not really ever completely dry and if you hit, hit these spots with the fixative or a light coat on the whole thing if you, to keep it even um, then it will let that set up and kind of harden and it, when it otherwise wouldn't really do that. Um, so on pieces like this, I would very strongly consider the oil pastel fixative by Sennelier. If this were just watercolor and I didn't use oil pastel on it and um, I just did marks and things that are pretty fine on their own, I would generally not fix it. That's your choice because usually it's going to get framed or it's going to be in a sleeve and it's going to be protected and I'm just not worried about it. Um, if you're selling the pieces and you're really concerned how a customer is going to handle it, then you might consider finishing it and that's just kind of your choice on the direction that you go. Um, a workable fixative is very handy if you've got layers that you need to set before you add the next layers on top. So I like the Krylon workative fixative and um, I just do real light layers. You never hold that can and spray a heavy layer. It could activate you know, your watercolors or whatever that's reactivatable with water. Um, but when you do real light coats and you let that dry and another light coat and you let that dry, it's not wet long enough to activate anything usually but again I would test this on a sample piece to see how it's going to react with the materials that you're using. If you're wanting just a nice varnish spray then I like the Krylon Kim Kamar varnish or the UV archival varnish and I like the UV archival one because it protects against the uh, colors fading. It gives you that UV protective coating so you're more likely to keep your vibrant colors vibrant for much longer and that's a nice choice um, but the Kamar varnish is nice also. I personally prefer the matte finish um, but they do sell these in matte satin and uh, shiny so you could or gloss is what that's called um, so those are some choices I also see a lot of watercolor artists use cold wax medium and you can use like the Gamblin cold wax medium or the Dorland's cold wax uh, medium on your pieces depending on what's on that piece and just to give you an example on a piece that doesn't have anything that's going to smear let me move this here I can give you just a real easy example of how these are going to work for you. I'm going to put this in the way it came out. There we go. And just set that to the side. But let's say you have a piece that's got nothing that could smudge on it. 
Um, then the wax medium is a good finish. What I like about the cold wax is it's made with beeswax. It's not toxic. You can put this on your fingers. It warms up to the touch and gets um, very clear. And basically all you do is get, you know, a big scoop on your fingers and then you come on your piece and you smear these on your piece and then you would let this dry completely. You'd cover the whole thing with a very thin layer of the wax and you'd let it dry and then a day or two later you would come back with a cloth like a soft uh, microfiber cloth or like one of these shop cloths that don't have um, any texture to it and you could just come back and buff your piece um, to a nice finish. Now that's only if you're determined to finish it and you're doing something that doesn't smear or it's not going to change the surface and I would practice with your piece before you would do that. And that would mainly be on like watercolor pieces. If I were painting with acrylic paint, that's a really, you know, acrylic paint is plastic in itself. So you may not need anything on acrylic paint. And if you're doing like an oil painting, then you'd want some type of varnish like the gam bar. Um, so those are different types of finishing options that you could research and look into. Then for framing, I now go uh, to the custom framer, but some of my very favorite do DIY kind of framing you can get at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um, Target. Target has the nicest ones and they're a frame and there's a mat and you're ready to put your, your painting in to the, the, the pre-cut frame. Um, those are really good for if you do the black frame, the white mat, and the art in it, kind of like it's a museum frame or gallery kind of frame. Those are really good and inexpensive for hanging pieces, but your piece needs to be more of a standard size. And a lot of pieces that I paint, they may or may not be standard size. And sometimes I like to deckle the edges. So a lot of people have said, what do you do with the pieces where the edges are deckled and I float frame them. So that means that that piece of art is floating in here. There's a pretty color mat behind it that kind of um, sets off the piece of art and then that art's mounted on top of that and I don't do this myself so I don't know exactly what the framers use to lift that piece of art off the mat. It's some type of foam core or double-sided adhesive with foam core in it or something that's about that thick because it is sitting up about a quarter of an inch from that mat. And then inside the frame they have spacers keeping the front of the glass from touching the piece of art. So they are kind of, there's a spacer in there giving that distance so that the art's not squished in there. And she special orders a thicker frame to make all that possible and then finishes the back with a dust cover. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm referring to float framing a piece that you have deckled the edges and created um, for that. I don't do that myself but you maybe could. My very favorite um, semi-custom frame destination is frame destination. And what I like about Frame Destination is they will uh, custom make a frame for you in the different frame materials that they offer and cut the mat in the specs that you ask for and they'll send that to you and you'll have a custom frame a lot cheaper than going to a true custom framer. So Frame Destination is a wonderful online source for like a semi-custom type product where you're ordering a custom frame and you're mounting it yourself. I just wanted to mention that just in case you were interested in an option and you had odd size art and you can't pick up a frame off the shelf. Um, and then of course my favorite way to frame stuff now is just to go to the custom framer because my custom framer is super creative and you know I don't get a whole lot of pieces done but you're gonna spend on average for one like this $250 um, would be about the price of a custom frame job whereas maybe with frame destination you'd spend $50 to $100 and maybe with an in-stock frame you'd spend 
you know, $20 to $30 or less. So, I mean, there's a big difference in framing and the looks that you get. But this is float framed. This is what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning deckled edges and float framing your pieces. And then this, of course, is just a regular piece framed with two mats. And if I was doing anything that had pastels on it and I didn't want to finish the pastel piece, but I didn't want, say, the shedding to ever show in front of the mats, then I would have the framer put a little tiny space in between the art and the mat so that there was like a little gullet around there where it, it was uh, set back a tiny bit and they could do that with picture framing spacers and then you have a little gullet for anything that's powdery that would fall down into that gullet and you'd never see it on the outside framing part of it um, but that's a standard double matted piece that i did that i had framed and then this is another float frame piece um, where I floated just a square edged piece on a pretty mat that was pulled out of the piece and then some interesting frame around it. So I hope that gives you some ideas on some things that you could do yourself. I've had tons of things framed in my house, but some of them are in uh, situations where they're not easy to pull off the wall or we could... <laughs> We could look at all kinds of custom framing the lady these people get very creative in the stuff that they do um, and then to the glass i want to talk about this glass real quick this is non-glare glass which is why you can sing that ring light up there but it's not taking over the whole picture whereas this one if i did the ring light you see how bright and glary that is so this was standard uh, glass and this was no glare glass um, I had these hanging on this wall and filmed in front of it for a while. And so that no glare glass was kind of nice for not picking up my filming lights and everything and glaring. And I think this one has the no glare, yeah, no glare glass in it too. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces that I have framed. Um, but the glass too is going to add to the expense. No glare is more expensive than just plain regular glass. Um, you could also get the... Uh, nice acrylic rather than glass and then it's less likely to break um, so you have a lot of options and a lot of different things that'll influence the pricing of the pieces that you create so just look around get creative start pinning some ideas on how you like things framed you might look up framing and start pinning um, different things and have an idea board and then I hope that gave you some ideas for framing and finishing and how you could store things in between all of that um, while you're deciding um, what you might do with your pieces. All right, I'll see you next time.